Scott, you ready? Okay. Kim, are you? Far too often watched, like far too often. <laughs> far too often watched, yeah. Wicked. It's one of the greatest movies I've ever seen. Well, yeah, we are here to talk about that, why it's so great. Hey, let me get your coat. Hi. Knives, that's Kim. So, basically, today in English, and I have a special guest with me, it's Connie Boy. Introduce yourself a little bit, please. I had the pleasure to meet Lucas at Berufsschule. This, why would you do this video now about this even more badass movie than we both are and, well, let's enjoy. And it's for our English lesson, that's why it's in English. Yeah, and then let's get straight into the movie, shall we? Password. Whatever. Cool. Hello, classmates. This is a video from our co-starring opportunity guests, Connie Boy. Shall I say something now? No, you, you don't. You smile all the way through, if that's okay for you. I already smile. We are a good collective. We're gonna do like a review of context, dialogue and techniques of this film, Scott Pilgrim. Versus the world. Enjoy. Seems nice. Yeah. yeah. Scott, if your life had a face, I would punch it. Yeah. Wait, what? Like, we, we try not to spoiler too much. What is Scott Pilgrim even about? It's about Scott, the main character. He has this very young high school girlfriend. Scott Pilgrim is dating a high schooler. Really? How old are you now, Scott? Like 28? But it kind of is weird. He's mid 20 and she's like 17. She's his fake high school girlfriend. Then you should break up with your fake high school girlfriend. What's that? Yeah, his fake high school girlfriend, yeah. And then suddenly he meets Ramona Flowers and, well, his whole world is shook up. And that also changes the movie in some way. At that point, it's like a normal laugh story, but on steroids, on super tight steroids that's like popped out of a comic. Oh, it's basically a love story on yeah. steroids. Oh, we should explain that Scott is playing in a band. The band. The band. For the band. For the band. Can't we do our For the band. What keeps the story going is yeah. the band. And what it is really about is love, relationship. Yeah. It's one of the greatest movies I've ever seen. Well, yeah, we are here to talk about that. Why it's so great. We were sex for bond. The first moment, well, the first time I watched the movie, I have to admit it was too much at certain times. And these other movies were great as well. Just, I had to watch them over and over again. Edgar Wright is known for putting a lot of information, a lot of detail into, yeah, it's just a feature film. And this is where I think the movie totally shines. Mr. Lee! Yeah, it is like the whole comic book thing. Why they change aspect ratios at all, I think. In a comic book, you have standard conversations, mostly 16 by 9 or 17 by 9. And then you have more intense action. Oh, yeah. Even wider than standard cinema scope. It's like 2.5 yeah. to 1 or so. And for example, the moment where he gets lost in the desert and the aspect ratio just starts shrinking further and further. It's so much about feelings you can bring yeah. up in the audience. Shrinking down, it's just like, ah, uh, you don't see as much as before and, and everything tightens and you, you are unsure of the future. No, it really, it was, so not, it was an outstanding movie when I first saw it. Good, now let's talk about split screens. Who is this mystery child you date? Her name's Niles Chow. She's Chinese. Norm normal movies try to like do a certain way that's common. And then there's a new filmmaker coming up and he just does it the way he feels it. Comics mostly use split screen because they just have to like 
do the tiles in some way and that's mostly ends in split screens. And that's why Scott Pilgrim also uses split screens because it's far easier to show two person's faces even though they are not in the same room. It brings visual storytelling on a next level. I think not only the split screens are very characteristic for Scott Pilgrim, it's also like the transition from one scene to the other. It's like six in the morning. It's so straightforward. It literally transforms. It, it doesn't, it's not like a transition. It transforms from one scene to the other, but so yeah. seamless. For example, he uses transition. Tr I, I'm just gonna call it T from now on. <laughs> and he, he even uses T in a certain way that it's not even obvious that the T was used. For example, in the first conversation uh, Scott has with knives, they intercut certain cameras, like a conversation, if you like over shoulder, over shoulder back, they intercut that. So the background literally changes, but you just don't notice because you're invested in, in the dialogue. True. The first time we get to know Knives Chow, the dialogue spans over a huge amount of time, but it's cropped down for the audience to just get a quick glimpse of the link between those two people. The good thing about how Edgar Wright is doing it, it's not like brain fog, oh, what did just happen? It feels just seamless. Hey! Uh, Scott Pilgrim? Hi, I was thinking about- Camera work. The camera is so outstanding to me. Do you have an example for that? We are at the first Battle of the Bands. Yeah. And a lot of his friends are shocked and then, you know, it's, it's, it's this fast movement of the camera. One person looks at the other, then the other, then the other, and then there's the gay person and the other person and then you. But still, it, it needs to feel like real. And this is what the film is so great about it. It was football season and for some reason, all the little jocks wanted me. I missed out on light. Um, definitely there are some very, very fancy things. Yeah, well, you have a light setup, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, everything in the background goes dark, and only your subject is still. Oh, lit. yeah. Scott stays there, and someone says, like, oh, you fucked up, more or less, basically. Dude, what? She's totally real. Who? Dialogue is one of the things that makes the movie so shine out to me. What? Dude, what do you know about dialogue? Why don't you go talk to Sandra Monique? They know a lot more. Lady dudes, what do you know about dialogue? I heard she has a boyfriend. The thing is, there, there are like two types of dialogues um, in this movie. One is super wise, super human, not even possible for like us normal people. Oh, I'd love to postpone, darling, but I just cashed my last rain check. What's that from? My brain! And then there's like dialogue that's super basic, as if the person didn't even have a brain at that moment. Where Scott tries to talk to Ramona in the first time on the party, and he just says... Hey, what's up? Nothing. Hey, you know Pac-Man? I know of him. Am I dreaming? I'll leave you alone forever now. Thanks. Basic conversation, but it's so on point funny that he just can't get to her. Yeah, it's 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 sarcastic. That's that's what I like. What I love about it, they make the jokes. It's it's through action, and this is much like a silent movie. It's through visual impact, through um, visual storytelling, and this is what makes those jokes so good. It's not like haha, I'm funny. No, the action and the overall editing makes it funny to you, and this is much more. I think compelling is the right word. Why it is such a masterpiece is due to how everything just fits perfectly. VFX. It's mostly your subtle, but it has a great effect doing that. Well, we are coming from the comic book again, and that's why we have so many VFX things you definitely see, like the playing the chord and just the D's coming out of the bass yeah. to illustrate the overall feeling like you would have in a comic book. There's no yeah. sound, so somehow you have to illustrate it. We have this the scene where Matt totally freaks out at the first battle of the bands and the music is so loud and he talks at the same time. We can't hear anything and it just 
put in the subtitles. But not only as normal subtitles displayed on the bottom of the frame, like here, but it's like integrated into the whole movie, into the whole frame. Not only subtitles, also illustrations to explaining an insider. You know, the scene where um, Ramona says, oh, he need a haircut. And then they explain the whole haircut thing in a little illustration um, with uh, the voiceover. Ago, three hours before his big breakup, he's been cutting his own hair ever since. So long ago. Or for example, when uh, the, the vegan guy uh, doesn't know something, and the, the text is, is blended in, he really doesn't know something. Was that not clear? Was that not clear? Edgar Wright emphasizes everything, VFX, sound effects, storytelling, dialogue, editing, and it all mixes together to this incredible piece. If you haven't seen the movie, go watch it. Go out now and watch it. If you want to be a filmmaker, I urge you to watch the movie. And you have our permission to leave class right now and watch this movie. Yeah. Do it. Absolutely. Right now. End card stuff. Do some funny faces, Connie boy. <laughs>